Hey everyone, Mark Bufa here alongside Doug Heim, the inventor of the Bowtie VersaTool. Doug, thanks for being here with us. So we've got three different types of tools here with the VersaTool. So we've got the first class, the business class, and the coaching class. And we're going to talk about the differences between the three and also the main reason behind this. So stay tuned. The VersaTool was something that came to the market. We saw it a lot on social media probably about two years ago, and you've perfected it, and now it's out uh, to market. So this resembles a lot the original Brunswick span gauge. What are some of the key differences between this and the original? The original tool was similar to this tool, except that we have uh, many more aspects that you can use this tool for. The original tool had a span ruler, and it also had notches on the tool, as you can see, that this tool has. And it also had a half scale uh, embedded in it so that you didn't have to do any mathematics when it came to laying out bowling balls and the particular uh, spans and cutting uh, fractions in half, as you can see here, the half scale. So this just saves you the hassle of trying to figure out four and three quarters cut in half. Doug, let's talk about the three flavors of the VersaTool that you have. So we have the, the first one, which is the first class. Very sturdy. It's the one that we use here in our shop. Uh, so what's this one made out of? This is made of aluminum, and it's engraved. It has no ink on it whatsoever. Uh, the engraving coming through is the aluminum from below the, the black oxidizing that's been done on it. It's just that this is metal, and it's more durable. Common sense. Yep. So the next one is the uh, business class. This one here is made of plastic, dual-sided plastic. As you can see, uh, if you take a close look, you'll see that... We have slapped two pieces of plastic together to give it more durability. And if you're um, looking for something a little bit uh, on the uh, more budget-friendly uh, aspect, this is where the coaching class comes in. So maybe for like high school coaches or or, or just somebody that wants to check spans during That's a clinic correct. or something like that, this would be a great tool as well. This tool does exactly the same thing as the other two tools. It's just made a little less expensive, more affordable. The tool has notches on it, just like the other tool, but they're not quite as deep but they still function just as well. But all the other aspects of the tool function just as well as the business class and the first class that we just introduced. All right, Doug, so let's, uh, let's dive into the uses of the VersaTool. Uh, no matter which class you get of VersaTool, you'll be able to do all of these demonstrations as, as we see fit here in the shop. So, uh, Doug, let's turn around and let's, uh, let's get to work. Sure. Here's a, here's a basic, uh, quick um, appreciation of what the VersaTool can take into account, correct, Doug? So the VersaTool, as we'll see here when we get into the details, um, will not replace a ProSec, but can do a lot of what a ProSec can do. Ab absolutely, right? sure. Uh, same thing with an armadillo. Uh, same thing also with a fitting ball for uh, oval degrees. That's and we'll correct. get yes, into that uh -huh. as well. Uh -huh. And also your trusty steel span ruler. Correct, right? Yes. So if you want to go out onto the lanes during, let's say, a have a ball league or something like that, and you don't want to carry around all of this stuff, well, you got Absolutely. something that you could easily Absolutely. fit into your pocket. The pivoting rudder uh, allows you to go into a hole and swivel consistently around the hole. As you can see, the rudder follows the curve of the hole that you've just drilled, and we can draw cut lines on the ball for the finger holes, like so. Very easily. Turn it sideways here. As I put the pencil in the notch, I'm going to go four and an eighth by four and a quarter. And the thickness of my tool is the bridge. There you go. Quite simple. Yep. Now, if you've got a plugged thumb hole and you need to relocate where you're going to drill the thumb hole, all you do is put the pivot rudder inside the finger holes. In this case, we're going to do a four. We're going to do four and three eighths by four and a half. And you have your cut line prepared for the thumb. Awesome. That quick, that simple. Yep. No guesswork because the pencil never leaves the notches. So, uh, Doug, one of the other things that we okay. see here with the with the pivot rudder is also that there's a little bit of an inlay as we see there, and uh, that's that's something great that uh, you just taught me today was with the uh, thumb slug override. 
This right? is correct. This allows you to put your thumb slug in the ball and even drill the thumb slug before you map out the ball because the override allows you to ride up over the top of the slug as long as you don't leave it sticking out more than half of an inch. You'll be fine because this rudder will read the span just as well uh, with the slug sticking out of the ball as it would as if it was in the ball, as you can see right here. Okay. Next up, uh, obviously, a uh, span ruler. <laughs> so similar to our <coughs> trusty steel span ruler. Correct. This, uh, this pretty much does the same. Okay, you have two span rulers on this tool. One you can use with a pivoting point and one with a pivot rudder. Uh, the span ruler goes from zero, which is on the leading edge of the pivot, or pivot rudder, up to six and three quarters of an inch. So, once again, if you've got the thumb hole drilled in the ball already and you needed to lay out uh, the finger holes, we've already shown you that earlier. We just draw the lines like so. And if you want to uh, do it the opposite way, where you've got two finger holes and you want to drill a thumb hole, well, we would do the same thing, only reverse it. Three and a half by three and five eighths, and you have your thumb hole line. By the way, you're going to notice that on both sides of the tool, we have a span ruler here, and this allows you to read for left or right-handed. And with the uh, with the half scale, you can use it whether you're left or right-handed just as well and still use the notches. Parts of the tool that the original tool did not have, it was not, it was not easily used by left-handers. They had to use their opposite hands to draw the lines on the ball. This tool uh, allows left-handers to have the same advantage as a right-hander would when laying out the bowling ball. Yeah, we get that a lot. Uh, you know, being an IPSIA certified master trainer, we do train lefties here at times and, you know, using the traditional tools, they're like, well, I can't handle this correctly right. because I'm left-handed. Exactly. So now this is a godsend for them. Well, we taught that, yeah, we, we built that into the Matter of fact, every lefty should buy this tool, <laughs> now that I think of it. There you go, good stuff. Now that we spoke about the, the rudder, let's, let's, let's emphasize a little bit on these notches, okay? So we can even hear them. Correct, okay? yep. So, and let's look at them a little bit closer up, where we <laughs> can see that there is an inlay in the tool, which basically allows you to dig your pencil into the tool. Um, and that is on three of the four sides of the, of That's the tool, correct. correct? That's correct. Okay. And you had asked me earlier about, well, uh, the tool has notches that are in sixteenths of an inch increments. So how would you get a 32nd of an inch span on the ball yeah. uh, if you were using the notches? So. I'll demonstrate that. Yeah, and your answer was uh, kind of like, oh, okay, should have thought of that. <laughs> All right, so Doug, what if I want to hit, uh, since your notches are in 16s, what if I want to hit a, let's say, four and a quarter plus span? Okay, very simple. Yeah. If you really want to be accurate at it, I'm going to demonstrate by marking four and one eighth and four and three sixteenths. Okay. And as you can see, there's another line on the ball. The dark line between the two lines you just drew is your 32nd of an inch cut. If you wish to map the ball out prior to drilling, getting all your lines on the ball before you drill, here's all you have to do. You line the zero from the half scale, half scale side of the tool up on your center of gravity or the center of your drilling. Using the half scale, I'm going to mark the four inch mark, which is realistically only two inches away. Now I have my cut line for the thumb hole. You use the pivoting screw tip here, pop it right in the cut line, and apply the finger cut lines to the ball. Now you have all the cut lines for your holes on the ball with the bridge. And now I'm prepared to drill all three holes. Now
Now instead of just marking uh, span lines like we did on this ball, let's do a layout using this tool. Okay. okay? So basically, we have on uh, the bottom piece of the Versa tool, we have basically all the angles here uh, indicated, which could be used for multiple purposes. So let's dive into that on the layout side and it's of things. And pr it's primarily a compass for you. Yeah. Yes. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have Mark start laying out his bowling ball, and I'm going to follow all the same steps with this tool. He's going to use all the tools that he has been using up to this point. Okay, so uh, we're going to use a layout of uh, 60 by 4 by 30 um, with a PAP of 5.5 by an inch up. Okay. That's okay. All right, so I'm going to be using my trusty ProSec. Okay. And you're going to For be every using the step you tool. make, I will follow. Go okay, ahead. Okay, so first step, pin through CG. All right, second step, 60 degrees. Okay, so we both got 60 degrees. Next up, four inches. Go ahead. Okay, next up, 30 degrees for the DAL angle. So we're pretty much the same here. Okay. Now we got uh, five and a half by one. So here I'm going to go one inch down. And then draw a perpendicular line five and a half across. If you have a good eye and you've been doing this for years, you can pretty much see 90 degrees as I can here. Uh, but what we're going to do is use the compass for that just in case. So we're going to line the compass up at 90 degrees and just connect our dots again. Okay, so um, we demonstrated how to do a dual angle technique uh, for using the Versa tool to, to accomplish your layout. However, there are shops that use the VLS technique or you know semicircles or whatever you want to call it. So we could also do that with the Versa tool. So we're going to do another side-by-side -side comparison, uh, myself using a span ruler and uh, Doug using the Versa tool. So I'm just going to draw here a two-inch semicircle, and obviously by hand this is not easy. Well, when you use the pivoting tip, you can punch it right in. Let me put it in a better position here. It's a way cleaner line than mine. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm in a notch. I, I can't miss. That's it. Actually, in real life, I'm really shaky. So, oh, okay. you know. <laughs> so let's do a four-inch pin. Now, so same thing, four inches. Okay, and then we'll uh, mark the uh, theoretical mass bias on this at six and three quarters. Okay, and then from here, let's go five inches, let's say. All right, so now we have our PAP. All right, so now I got to switch tools now and go to my ProSect, line up my pin buffer with my PAP. All right, so here I've got my VAL, and now same thing, we'll, we'll just draw our um, PAP backwards, so one inch up by five and a half. Awesome. 
So we get the same result, myself using two tools, yourself using one. So now that we uh, saw what the compass could do in terms of building a layout on a bowling ball, what else can this do on the fitting aspect of things? Okay. Uh, there's a lot of ways to achieve all of this already, but incorporating it into the tool, we built a little donut up here or a finger rest area, and we can place the thumb through here and see the oval angle on the customer's grip or the customer's thumb. Uh, for instance, I used Mark here earlier. Um, I put his fingers through here and his thumb through here, and I eyeballed it, and I saw he was about a 50-degree oval, between 45 and 50, and he, was said, and he said that was correct. Yeah. You read the angle of the oval, you mark it on your sheet, you're done. Or inspector. <laughs> All right. Doug, we talked about a lot of the fitting options, uh, like how to lay out a ball, how to do all that type of stuff. Yes. But now we could also use the Versa tool to find the PAP for the bowler. So let's go ahead and do that on our little test. That's no here. problem. That's no problem. So as you can see, we already have a track written on this ball or, or wrote, uh, inscribed on the ball here. So all we have to do now is we'll use the ball cup. We're going to use our pivoting tip here, and we're going to mark off four sections around the track, as I'm doing here now. And we're going to form a box. So you're using the, the uh, indicating tool, the, the indicating uh, arrow that we see right here on the tool. Exactly. Right? Okay. We have an indicator arrow here that has a, a notch down below it, and we're using the indicator arrow as our destination point as we draw the box. As you can see, we have the box. All you have to do is cross the corners of the box. And here is our PAP right there on this particular ball with this track. And here we have a crease measure guide. This is the tool that can be used uh, for teaching when you're showing customers how long their span should be on the ball that they're currently using and why you might find the difference between one span versus the span that you're suggesting. So for instance, if I take Mark's hand here, which you see we've already marked, here's the crease on the finger right here. We can lay this tool right up against it like so, putting the zero on, on the crease, and you can teach your customers why you believe that their span, instead of being here, should be back this way. Or if you're training somebody, you wish to show them how far back you would like them to go when you're checking the span on the ball, so that when you do put the thumb in the ball, you can see exactly where you would have your indicator as opposed to where the holes are already placed as you're coaching or teaching, or you have a customer in the store that you're trying to explain to them why possibly you would adjust their spans. Yeah. So we demonstrate a lot of the uses of the Versa tool that you could use in your pro shop, from fitting to measuring to laying out. Okay, so make sure you check out dhbowpro.com or contact us up here in Canada at Bufa Distribution to get your hands on your own Versa tool.